Hey, Geronimo! Get back to work! <laughs> Did you hear me? I said get back to work! Hey, man. It's hotter than hell out here. Tommy, come on, man. Get it. Get over here and give us a hand. Sure. He needs to get his head straightened out or something. Tommy, come on, man. You piss him off or he's gonna fire us off. Come on, come on. Hey, what is this? Got some. Wait, hey, careful, man. We don't want to damage this. You're in thick. Get in here. Hey, get away. You're gonna get the <laughs> line. Oh. Hey, I got something here. Hey, man. Hey, see, I'm hurt. <laughs> There's quite a bit of blood. You'll need stitches. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Professor Noll, you gotta take a look at this. Not now, Yuri. I got a man hurt over here. Look, Billy, take Tommy into town, get a doctor, get that arm stitched up. We'll pay the bill. Sure. Professor Knowles, come and take a look at this. The hell is it, Yuri? They can't wait for Come on. Look, uh, Joe, why don't you catch up with the other guys and uh, help them out with Tommy, all right? In fact, by the time you're done, most of this day will be shot, so why don't you just take the rest of the afternoon off? Well, go on. You better hurry up if you're going to catch up with them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll explain later. Joe sure seemed bothered by this thing. What did he call it? You recognize the term he used. I could tell. I'll explain it later. Natalie, get some of the students over here to take these bones out of here. Don't put it in the lab tent. Bring it up to the block house. And Natalie, you make sure none of the Indian workers see this. You can shake them up.
Skinwalker? Skinwalker. It's also known as a shapeshifter, it's, a, it's the Navajo equivalent of a uh, lycanthrope. A goddamn werewolf. Werewolf? You mean Joe thinks this thing is a werewolf? Well, not exactly. Not, not, not in our traditional white man's movie monster sense. You see, Yanaglansi translated. Means he who trots here and there on all fours. Huh? Well, let, let me explain. I, I, Yanaglansi. There's a human witch who wears the skins of fierce animals, such as a coyote or a wolf or bear. He assumes the quality of those animals, gains power from them. He's been known to roam about at night, creating all sorts of malevolent deeds. The Navajo claim that they can tell when a Yanaglanchi is close by the sudden sound of all kinds of peculiar noises, and particularly the loud barking of dogs. They also can tell when a man is Yanaglanchi. He takes on a series of strange body habits. Like sleeping like a coyote, nose to anus. The house begins to smell of coyote yarn. This is absolutely fascinating. So, Noel, what happens after they become Yanaglanchi? I mean, Joe was so upset this afternoon. What do these creatures do? Natalie, you you gotta understand that the uh, that the Navajo is steeped in tradition and sacred beliefs, like the Christian are in Christianity. Any perversion or desecration of these traditions are taken very seriously by their people. They've been known to drop noxious powders ground from the bones of infants down the holes of their hogans to cause sickness, social problems. Even death. My God. These things are just vile. Evil incarnate. So, how do they stop them? Well, if I remember correctly, they call him a hatate. He's a medicine man protect them. The hatate comes in to try to to try to get the Yanaglanchi. But if he's too late. They arm themselves and they hunt the bastard down. Listen. What was that? Probably a car on the road. Anyway, that's what I know about the legend of the Yanaglachi. Thank you so long. They had to stitch him up. How is he? He's bad. How bad? Bad, bad.
Look, Noel, I'm not superstitious, but this really isn't any kind of conventional animal I'm familiar with. What do you think it is? Natalie, I really couldn't tell you what this thing is, but look, look at the bone structure of the legs. Look at the teeth closely. This thing ran on all fours like a dog. The teeth are canine in structure, yet it has human qualities. We're going to have to take it back to the lab and study it. But at the risk of sounding nuts, I think we just stumble on the remains of a lycanthrop. Come on, Noel. You're a rational man. That's impossible. Werewolves? A skinwalker isn't. But don't be so quick to dismiss legends. Legends have to begin somewhere. Perhaps this is a creature of legend. Do you realize if this was a lycanthrope, it could be the discovery of the sanctuary? <laughs> And not to mention the person responsible for its discovery would be famous. What do you think? Well, I can't make it out. I've never seen a case like this before. I mean, you saw his face. Yes, I did. There is constant transformation. What should we do? Should we call Dr. Brown? No, that's not necessary. Just get a blood test, send it to the lab, and keep him under intense observation. Yes, Doctor. You know, you should get some rest. You look exhausted. Yeah, thank you for the advice. Where in the hell have you been? Do you know what time it is? Where in the hell is Tommy? Shit. Here we go again. Hey, I'm talking to you! Look, man. Tommy's at City Emergency Hospital. He's sick! The guy's turning in... He's real sick. What's wrong with him? He got an infection from that thing he cut himself on yesterday. That's all I know. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to work. Go ahead. On 244, don't I? I haven't seen you around. Are you new here? No, Dr. Brown. I was just about to ask you the same question. I'm filling in for Dr. Frederick. He's on leave. Oh, I see. Well, let's, let's see. Patient in room double D 212, John Young. He's been released. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice hair, Neil. Thank you. That's good. Hi, 
to. This will take care of him. What makes you think he's going to come back here? Everybody's out looking for him, right? Yeah. Where do you think he's going to come back to? Back to his lair. We'll be ready for him. I see something over there. That's him. your first time in Flagstaff, sir? Well, actually, um, I grew up here until I was 10, and then uh, we moved to New York. Well, it doesn't seem like anything has changed around here. That's good. Uh, no, sir. A lot has changed. If you stick around, you'll find out for yourself. Just the other night, half man, half beast got shot down. They took him to the hospital. He's in a coma. Police are investigating. It's been all over my radio. Is that so? Do you believe in Dracula, sir? No. <laughs> Me neither. How about werewolves? No, no, I can't say that I do. Uh... I'm beginning to have second thoughts. A lot of people think about stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they do, huh? Glad 
to see you can make it. Miss Carrie's upstairs waiting for you. with a gun in your hand? What, this? This is just to keep the flies down. There's some weird things happening around here. Mr. Knight! I just found out Count Dracula was a faggot. Oh, is that so? <laughs> you don't have to believe me, but that's the facts. <laughs> Weird things are going, weird things are coming, weird things are doing around here. Typing this note for you. Well, uh, read it. You mean this? Dear Mr. Niles, I waited for you all day, but you didn't show up. Therefore, I had to go to the office. Please call me when you get in. Cordially, Carrie. Yeah, my flight was delayed from New York, but uh, thanks anyway. Well. What do you think? Before your mother passed away, we tried to sell the house. But with the restorations and the poor economy, we didn't have many offers. When I heard you were coming back, I thought I'd use the little budget I had to fix up the attic. Until you decided what to do with the house. Well, thanks here. It's really nice. It's the perfect place for starting the end right. <laughs> I can't wait to find out what your book is about. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, Carrie. Well, I guess I better go so you can unpack. By the way, uh, who is that guy upstairs? Oh, you mean Sam? I wouldn't worry about him. He's just the groundskeeper. By the way, what are your big plans for tonight? Plans? I haven't got any. Why? because I was invited to a birthday party and I thought you might like to come. Are you sure it wouldn't be an inconvenience? I mean, I don't know anybody there. Well, you'll get to know them all. It's a small town. I'll pick you up at eight. said a word since we left the house. I'm sorry, I'm just a little preoccupied with my thoughts, that's all. Do you find me boring? No, 
You asked me to accompany you to this party, right? I mean, I didn't think it meant a date. Well, if that's what you want, then that's what you get. Walk home. I'm leaving. <laughs> you know what I think of you, Paul? I think you're a struggling writer with no tomorrow. Just you stay out here and get sober before you rejoin the party. And when you do, you can apologize to Natalie. Now go take a walk. He just had too much to drink. Don't apologize for it. I mean, the man's got no class. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. He's got no class. <laughs> I'm uh, Paul Niles. Natalie Burke. Nice meeting you.
You might have a drink. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm on duty. Come on. Tonight's a special night. Come on. Have a drink. Here. Well, since it's the end of my shift, I'll make an exception. That's my man. So, cheers. And let's drink to our new friendship and our friend, the werewolf. I'll drink to that. Stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. My mother used to tell me fairy tales about this. Well, never believe it. I'm from Bandisi, Italy. Oh. My mother's passed away. God bless her. So. Tell me, have you made any uh, <laughs> history-shattering discoveries lately? Enough about me. What about you? What do you do? I'm a writer. I'm actually working on something now. Really? What's the subject matter? Hey, I love this music.
to be honest, I work as a reporter sometimes, freelance. Now, if this, if this discovery of yours is real, I can help you. How? Well, I got a lot of friends in New York, a lot of connections in the media. Now, they would be very interested in a story like this. I mean, you need, you need the money for research, don't you? Sure, but... Look, just, just show me the remains, and that's all I'm asking. I'll, I'll be very happy to show you the remains, but I have to check with Noel first, so... How about tomorrow? Sounds fine, we go do it. So, here we are. Would you like to come up with a drink? I guess I'd better go. I have a lot to do tomorrow. Paul? What? Welcome to Flagstaff. Thanks. What do you got there, Paul? Sam. Sam, this is Natalie. Natalie, this is Sam the Keeper. Nice meeting you, Sam. How do you do? We can always use another pretty face around here. Any friend of Paul's is a friend of mine. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow.
Paul, what do you think? Well, uh, I'm impressed. I've never seen anything like this. But just out of curiosity, what makes you so certain that this thing is a werewolf? I mean, I don't want to sound skeptical, but couldn't it be some kind of a deformed animal, like a bear or a coyote or something? Why a werewolf? I don't understand that. Well, look, when Noel gets here, he can explain it in detail. But let me show you something. When you look at the structure of the leg, you can see. Oh, that must be Noel now. <laughs> oh, Yuri. What's he doing? Don't you know this is restricted area? Yuri, Paul's been cleared by Noel. He's here to help us get more research funding. Relax, there's no call for a plasma here. Would you get this clown? Hey, look. I really don't need this. I didn't come down here to be insulted by a psychopath. You calling me a psychopath? Don't stop it! Ah. Uh. Here, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Get out of here! Get out! Get out of here! Get out!
fixing myself a drink. You want one? Uh, sure. I'll have whatever you're having. Thanks. I didn't think I would ever hear from you again. I tried to stop you when you left the lab, but your taxi drove up before I could catch you. Come on, you don't have to worry. I'll pay for any damages. Come on, Paul. Don't be like that. Why not? I screwed everything up, didn't I? No, Paul, you didn't. What happened at the lab wasn't your fault. Come on, Natalie. It never would have happened if I hadn't been there. What happened was only your fault. I explained everything to No. He doesn't blame you. He knows how here he is. That doesn't repair the damage. I mean, you're fine with this dirt. It wasn't as bad as it looked. There was no irreparable damage. The bones weren't bad. We can piece them back together. Believe me, I do this for a living. I hope you're right. Of course I'm right. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Now get off your guilt trip. We still need your help. You might be just our last hope. So what do you say? I'd love to. That's great. <coughs> Paul, what's wrong? Nothing, really. It's nothing. It's just a scratch from my fight with Yuri. Well, let me see. No, no, no. Come on. It's nothing. Take off your shirt. All right, but I'm telling you, it's... It's not a scratch, it's a deep cut. What seems to be the problem, fella? <laughs> My zipper stuck. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we start the festivities in the back seat? <laughs> ah. The rain, the rain cup. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I mean. You know, I don't know what the big deal is. We aren't even naked yet. I just want to know if you brought one. That's it. Uh, too late. Ah, uh, forget it. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, you blew it. I didn't mean to you ruined the mood. Oh, sweetie. Matt, where's the keys? Where do you hide those keys? <laughs> I bet I can find them. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, my God. Don't look at me. Oh, wait.
cast a heavenly glow on planet Earth, all hell breaks loose. Statistics show that many wild things happen when the moon is full. Many scientists believe that moon madness is a myth. The sun looks so strange on the full. Where the moon's effect on a human you look can like transform hell. him into a werewolf. What's wrong? Paul. Huh? <laughs> oh, man. It's like a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Running in the streets, doing things. Can't figure it out. Ellie, I'm scared. Maybe you were sleepwalking. My brother was alive. Was... What time is it? 4.30, what? Well. I was hoping to do some writing. You know what I really want to do? See this Indian in the hospital. I want to know what happened to him. What do you know about this, huh? Come on, Natalie, what do you know? What are you holding back? I'm not holding back anything. He's in the hospital because... Because what? Look, I talked to Joe and Billy, his co-workers. Come on, come on, spit it out. They said they saw him turn into a beast. And when he attacked them, they had to shoot him. That's why he's in the hospital. Sorry I got you into this mess. I'm very concerned about your well-being. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I'll I don't know. I, I think I'm going to talk to you later. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yuri, why are you staring at me like that? Just that so many things have happened since we discovered those remains. Tommy's in the hospital, and Paul's been acting very strange. He thinks he's turning into a werewolf now. You believe that? I don't know what to believe anymore. Do you realize that if this is true, it could be the greatest find in the century? Not to mention the millions of dollars that would be available to us for research. I'm not concerned with millions of dollars. I'm concerned with Tommy and Paul. Just calm down. What are you hiding from me, Noel? Tell me the truth. In due time, you'll know everything. Well, maybe then it's too late.
never gonna make it. You're a hustler. <laughs> it was just a stroke of luck. Uh huh. You're a hustler. Wreck him up. That's the American way. It's all right, Paul. I can handle this. You great. As always. I'll catch you next time. There will be no next time, Yuri. Yeah, you're good. Let's see how good you really are. I'll rack them.
imagination but what happened to Tommy I swear I saw it happen to Vic the security guard right before my eyes the police have his body at the morning now Paul has the same symptoms maybe even worse I know where Paul lives and I suggest you get all the units ready and meet me at Paul's before we lose him like lost Tommy and Vic if Paul turns out to be a in a glunchy a werewolf your reward will be immeasurable. Professor Noel, I can't wait to show you. Okay, where is he now? I'm sure he went back to his nest to hide. Now we must get to him before daybreak, before he returns to normal. All right, I'm on my way. Yuri, where's Paul? You're asking me? This is not the time for games. What games? What happened to him? Is he in danger? That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Let's talk. Just say whatever you have to say. Okay. Okay. I know this is going to be very difficult for you to understand. But forget about Paul. He's a full-blooded werewolf. Now you know it, I know it, Noel knows it. And if you don't want what happened to Tommy to happen to Paul, help us get him back to the lab. Put him in a cage, hold the press conference, and let the world see what we've achieved. Now, hold on. Noel and some of the guards are on the way to grab Paul and take him to the lab. I resent violence. I don't want anything to happen to him. He's all we've got. And I'm sure you don't want anything to happen to him either. So it all comes to this? You and Noel is in it for fame and fortune? But over my dead body, you hear me? I won't stand for it. Hey, Natalie! Hey, Natalie! Don't, 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 don't. 
Is that you? I'm Sam, the keeper. I'm the good guy. I don't think you should go up there. Something horrible has happened. I was just praying for the police. I think we should call the cops. No, Sam, don't call the police. I'll take care of him. Don't worry about it. Is the gun loaded? This? Sure it's loaded. I want you to go to the window. And if anybody tries to break in, shoot him. You got it, Miss Nick. take you to the lab and cage you. <laughs> I'm here to help. I don't know how, but I know I gotta get you out of here. <laughs> They're gonna be here soon.
bola meio 